Good afternoon, dear brethren, dear saints, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Very quickly before we begin, Hebrews chapter 5, verses 13 on to verse 14. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. There ain't nothing wrong with being a babe. You got to learn how to crawl before you can walk, okay? We were all babes at one time. Some of you are still babes, okay? There's nothing wrong with that, all right? Verse 14. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use, putting their walk into their talk, living according to the scriptures, okay? But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And that right there is lacking because Christianity is filled, is filled with toxic pus juice, milk. Yeah, toxic milk. It's funny, yesterday we were talking, oh, Brother Alexander B. Hartley and I, about, you know... <laughs> What would happen if we were all drinking actual real milk, not the stuff that they, they come, you know, come in the carton, the plastic carton, you know? Yeah, you know, the fake stuff, the fake stuff, okay? But yeah, Christianity is being fed poison milk to begin with, okay? Brethren, this video is not going to be a milk video, okay? It isn't. If you're looking for something milky, there, there is stuff on the channel that is regards to that. Uh, this video is not milk. Okay, this video is going to be me. We're going to get into some deep stuff today, okay? Just so you know, all right? Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me in the scriptures that we are going to be considering today. Because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. You need to read along, because you need to hear. But faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word, the authorized version, is truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? Read along with me. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I make mistakes. This goes quicker than the brain. More often than not. Okay? I make mistakes. Praise the Lord. There are brethren who is like... <laughs> you, oh, thanks. Brother. Forgive me, Lord. Thank you. Okay? Read along with me. Okay? Question. I love it when the brethren ask questions. Uh, brother? Brother? Um, you're, you'll see this. Um, as regards to your question about Satan and angels, uh, the, the quick answer to your question, no. No. The quick answer to your question is no. 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 Lord willing, we will be getting to that. Um, hopefully, Lord willing, keep me in prayer, dear brother, please. Okay. Uh, hopefully, we will get to that on Friday. Hopefully. It, I'm not in control of this. He, he is. Okay. But uh, the quick answer to your question, dear brother, is no about what you asked about Satan and angels. We will, that will get its own video, but um, <laughs> did you look how many times the word soul appears in scripture? Like something like 400 times, brother. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to look up every, every verse that has soul in it but um that that's that's yeah so but like i said the quick answer to your question is no uh lord willing we will we will get to that scripturally here friday so keep me in prayer okay okay i got you brother great question and i always expect no less but another question came up which some of you got the question um about 2 Peter chapter 2. Now, somewhere on the channel, there is an expository video that we did here 
on Second Peter chapter 2. Done years ago, like when we first moved in here. Um, if I can find, I'll find that. And I'll put it in the description box. But in this video, even though that was an expository video, um, we're going to get really, really deep uh, into some things that probably we didn't in the one expository video. Okay? The question came up about 2 Peter chapter 2, specifically verse 22. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Amen, amen, hallelujah. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 22 reads, But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. And of course the dog, his, the sow, her, okay, a distinction. Distinction! Distinction! About 2 Peter chapter 2. The question was more or less, um, uh, I, I had it and I listened to it, so to get the question right. If this is true, that, well, number one, the context is talking about those who are not saved to begin with. Okay, and we're, gonna, we're going to examine this throughly, so you know. But the context within 2 Peter chapter 2 here, and the true context for this will be from verses 14 on to the close here. But that context shows us that Peter is talking about those who are the false prophets, false converts, those who were not of us to begin with, okay? That is the context of it. So when it comes to verse 22, but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog has turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Okay? The question was, well, if that is true, then am I saved? Because you know what? How many of you, since the Lord saved you, have you gone back to certain things that you know you shouldn't have? Hmm? Oh, unless you're like some perfect uh, individual from Maine or something like that, and all those people that follow him who never, 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 you know, have any kind of problems whatsoever. They're, they're perfect creatures. <laughs> okay, excuse me. That, that, that's really beginning to bother me. But anyway, 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 um, you know, I'll give you an example. Uh, I've been saved for 16 years. Okay, excuse me for saying it, but uh, when the Lord first saved me, I gave up cigarettes right away. But then again, I went back to and smoked cigarettes, I turned to my own vomit in a way. So does that mean I'm lost? Hmm? How many of you saints? Let's get real with each other, shall we? Let's get real with us, men, brethren. How many of you saints? Knowingly, willfully put wicked things before your eyes and looked at them. And you're a saint. Hmm? Return back to the old neighborhood to visit it, not live there. Okay? How many of you have done that? Hmm? Now, there are certain things that the Lord will deliver us from, for, you know, for example, uh, prolonged drug use, pornography, alcoholism, and so forth. Yes, 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 okay? But we all seem to have these little pet sins. Unless you're these perfect people, you know, these perfect, holier-than-thou people, you know, <laughs> yeah. Okay, but the reality is most of us saints... Um, have these things that we hate and we do them. Hmm? There are some saints who, uh, as it says in Isaiah 22, Isaiah, go along, come on. Isaiah 22, all right. In Isaiah 22, verse 14, And it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts, Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord God of hosts. 
There are some saints out there who do things that they know that they shouldn't do. Um, they're drinking, smoking, watching certain things. Okay, well, can't the Lord deliver them from that? Yes, absolutely, but not by gunpoint. Not by gunpoint. See, you got people who say, well, I can't quit. I'm using smoking because that's the easiest one. I can't quit smoking. Um, number one, by your own power, you need, you need the Lord's help. I'll give you that. But, uh, dude, do you want to? Do you really want to quit smoking them rotten cigarettes, huh? Do you want to? I say, uh, you're a saint, and you're smoking them cigarettes. Do you really want to quit? Because if you really wanted to quit, if you truly, in your heart, wanted to give those things up, the Lord would be like, okay, let's do this. Okay, that's how that works. But do you want to? This can't thing is, the, uh, is a uh, horrible excuse. We don't make excuses, remember? Oh, ooh, that one for the, that's one uh, for the description box, okay? Excuse, okay? We don't make excuses, remember? All right? All right? Okay? If you really wanted to, you have access to the Father within you. You really want to. You get scared or something like, or whatever it is, if you really wanted to, the Father is in you. He can definitely give you what is needful to do that. But see, he, he's not going to force you to do it. Okay? He's not going to force you to do it. you got to make the right decisions. So the question is, do you want to give those things up? Some of you might say you do, but yet you have no freedom, no victory from that. I want not to sin. Does that mean that I stop sinning? Of course not. Of course not. Why? Because I make wrong decisions. And remember, and we're going to look at this at the close of this video, not even Paul, the greatest of the church of God, not even Paul could always make the right decisions 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Uh, he missed the memo about sinless perfection. Okay? All right? So the question is, Knowing that context of 2 Peter chapter 2, uh, specifically from verses 14 on to 22, uh, is talking about guys who were not even saved in the first place, and they return onto their vomit. Does this apply for us as saints? No. 2 Peter chapter 2, let's read verses 1 on to verse 3. Okay? Now, distinction! Dog is a his, sow is a her, okay? Distinction, differences between the two, okay? We see in 2 Peter cha uh, chapter 2, verse 1, now let's, we, we need to pay attention, okay? This is what I said, this ain't milk, this is meat. Let's look at this verse, okay? 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people. False prophets. You know there's a difference between a prophet and a teacher? A prophet can teach and a teacher can prophesy. But things that are different are not the same. Okay? You read about this in Ephesians. Uh, Paul gives distinction. You know, there are some teachers, prophets, evangelists, and stuff like that. Okay, things that are different are not the same. Okay, the prophet can teach. The teacher can prophesy. Yes, yes. But there is a distinction between the two. Okay, there is. Okay, and you know, false prophets, you look in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, Beloved, Believe not every lowercase s spirit, one that is imparted, but try the lowercase s spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. 
the prophets, the ones that are promoting, okay, the ones that are teaching. Remember, prophets can teach and teachers can prophesy. But there is a distinction between the two. There is. And in the scheme of things, in the book of Ephesians, um, the prophet is higher up on the thing there. Okay? Well, he is. All right? And it's not the Old Testament prophet giving extra scriptural revelation. No, we have to complete it canon of scripture. You see these Pentecostals who do all this nonsensical satanic prophesying, and it's always contrary to scripture, rightly divided. Always. Without exception. Okay? But there were false prophets also among the t uh, people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you, who, br who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. And here's the one thing in this verse that we cannot escape from. And here is where the deception of devils reeks of putrefaction. Even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Now, but there were false prophets among the people. Among the people. False prophets. We go back to 1 John chapter 2. Verses 18 on to verse 19. Okay, we already looked at 1 John 4. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. And now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Now this is the falling away. Oh, oh we're, we're going to hit that hard today. See, because this plays into, like what Mr. Fig, uh, I, I don't watch him anymore, but what Mr. Fig, I'm sure, is still trying to get through your head, that the falling away is save people that get messed up. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. We're going to prove that scripturally today. Oh, we're going to prove it. Yes, we are. The Lord is going to prove it to you through the scriptures, through this sinner who is chief. Okay? But, all right? They went out from us, but they were not of us. These fakes who observe our steps, who watch us, who want to take our liberty and turn it into a license to sin. So wicked, foul-mouthed, satanic devils who's like, I have peace. Yeah, you're at peace with your sin, you wicked filth devil. Okay? Anyway, anyway. But they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. This is a scriptural definition of what it is for falling away. Okay? We're, we're gonna, oh, we're going to hit that hard today, boy. You're going to have no doubt. Okay? Unless you're a lost guy who wants to justify yourself and be at peace with your sin. And see, why would someone... So rabidly, adamantly, protest. Well, the falling away is safe. People getting you no. Know, why? They're looking to cover their backside, looking to justify themselves. They're not safe, so they go after that. Okay. Oh, we, we're going to get into this. Don't worry about it. Okay. Now, go back to First Peter, Second uh, Peter, chapter two, verse one. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Now, there was a, while, there was a time when I erroneously taught that if anyone could say... <clears throat> Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. There was a time that I taught that if anyone could say that, that was proof positive that they were saved. I was wrong about that. And oh, we, with the, the scripture, the videos, 
uh, we've we've done or that the scripture proves that no, no. Anyone could repeat something like a parrot and say it over and over. Hey, that that guy who called on the name of the Lord a thousand times, he was coached into saying Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay, even the talk show host was able to say and hit and get do. Dude, I remember that. Oh, I remember that. The the look on your face as if you were just repeating what you were programmed. I likened it onto the look on your face was like the J-Hos when they look off, remembering how they've been programmed with the martyr, martyrdom complex. Okay, um, that, that was chilling. And yes, the Canadian talk show host did that. And I remember that. Yes, I do. And then that sets you off. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You said it, but you're, you're lost. <laughs> okay? Okay? Again, video for that will be in the description box where we go and scripturally um, uh, show that someone who can merely say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. That doesn't mean they're saved means they can say it, but that doesn't mean they're saved, okay? I, for a while, thought that was so. The Lord corrected me brutally through Scripture, okay? All right? I got messed up. I was messed up in that. But see, I got corrected, okay? Had I shunned the Lord's rebuke, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Now, the question comes up. <laughs> okay. This, now, see, this ought to be a no-brainer. But with the, the poisonous milk that these wicked uh, Christians have brought into the fray. Who are those who are bought? Saints. Saved people are what? Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Right? Right? We saints are what? Purchased. Oh! 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 19 on to verse 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Yeah, God doesn't dwell in phallus houses made with hands. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And, and, and for this, of course, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, 3. 3. What am I, from New York? Uh, verses 15 on to verse 16. Uh, no, 16 on to 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Jesus Christ is God the Father. God the Father dwelleth in you. The Lord is that Spirit. The Holy Ghost, you, you got the Lord, our Father, Jesus Christ, dwelling within you. How is he in heaven and blah, 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 blah. Uh, the wrong God will be in this uh, video as well. Okay? We answer that throughly. Okay? Through the scriptures. Okay? But, all right, if, all right, uh, where is that? Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the capital S spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man, if any man including you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Okay? Through poisonous food or defile the body because of what comes out of you. Because what comes out of the mouth, that defileth the man. Okay? What goes in doesn't defile you, right? Our Lord said that. What comes out of you defileth the man. Okay? Okay? Just keep that in mind. All right? Back in 1 Corinthians 6, 
What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye, saints, saved people, are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, lowercase s, which are God's. And that's not calling us little gods either, you wicked heretics. We're bought, huh? Oh, and of course, the, the simplest one to show this, okay, is of course Ephesians chapter 1, 13 on to verse 14. Okay? Saints, saved people are the purchased ones. Okay? We're bought with a price, the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? We'll, we're going to get to that. But, um, unsaved people, or it's not unsaved, excuse me. Not saved people are not purchased, okay? You believe and receive heretical, satanic, Roman Catholic, ecumenical, pond scum, dung doctrine saves nobody, okay? Because it is of Satan. You believe and receive <coughs> is grotesque. It is not the gospel. It is heresy. Oh, we, we've proven that quite extensively, quite thoroughly through scripture, okay? But... Saved people are the ones who are bought. Ephesians chapter 1, 13 on to verse 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, the saint. Unto the praise of his glory. Okay? And the Lord buys you, purchases you, when you go the elect way of the cross, which begins with death. Death. The need of death. Yes. Yes, the need of death. Okay? Death to self. The cross is death. Yes, it becomes new life. Yes. Become, by being made a new creature, absolutely. But you've, something's got to die before you can be born again. And of course, 50 guesses in the first 49 don't count. Who refutes death before new life? Huh? Like I said, first 49 guesses don't count. Okay? All right? But who are the purchased possession? Everybody? Oh, nay, nay! Nay, 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 nay. No, those of us saints who went the elect way of the cross. God's the one who chose the cross. And if you want the Lord to save you, you gotta go the way of the cross. You don't boot the door genius out of the way and climb up some other way, or else you're a Christian. You're an antinomianist. You're a Pentecostal. Okay, and all the, the uh, denominations within the divided Christ of Christianity. Okay? So, okay, and Acts 20. Acts 20. Acts 20. The mouth of two or three witnesses. How about five? I know that five is a number of death. <laughs> okay, yeah, death to us. Acts 20, 28 under 30. Now, Paul, in uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, Peter is giving the distinction between those who were never of us and also those who are of us and get messed up. But see, the consequence and bring upon themselves swift destruction. See, in verse 1 in 2 Peter chapter 2, there are two. Peter is showing us Okay, there are those who were never of us. They're lost. Like the free gracer guys, they're all lost. Okay, they're all lost. All right. And then there are those brethren who get messed up. Okay? There are. That's not the falling away. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. We're we going to get to that. Don't you worry about that, that sweet pie. We're going to get to that, okay? But Acts 20, Paul also shows us. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, unto the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. 
Who has the Holy Ghost? The Lord is that spirit, our Father, Jesus Christ. Saints, save people. Okay? To feed the church of God, not yourselves, you heretic. <laughs> yeah. Count your pennies and cars, pal. Which he hath purchased. Don't, don't look at me. With his own blood. Okay? For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flocks. The flock, excuse me. Enter in. False brethren unawares brought in. Uh, we must need, ju we must judge will be in the description box, you know, of Monday's video, okay? Also of your own selves. Of your own selves. Shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. They want to be the big shots. They want to be well known. They want all the subscribers. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. But the point is, purchased. Saints are the purchased ones. Just because Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood on the cross, okay, that don't mean that everybody is a purchased possession, okay? Uh, not everybody going to be saved, okay? Not everyone going to be saved, okay? All right? No, that's, that's universalism. That's heresy. That's a God of coercion. Again, Dade Murphy, that wicked devil, he don't want to be saved. He wants to engage in whatever he wants to, he, and he at least admits that, okay? But no, not everybody is going to be saved. God is not a God of coercion, okay? Okay, sweetie pie? This is, this is simple nuts and bolts stuff, okay? 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy, no. Yeah, 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Come on. Come on, fingers. Fifteen to the close. One of my all-time favorite verses in Scripture. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. That's present tense. Saints sin, but Paul sin who is chief. And see, the false, especially the easy believers, dot guys, you can lightly scratch them, guys. I'm better than so and so. Perfect. I've said this mil millions of times, but it, it bears repeating. Okay. Bring up Jeffrey Dahmer. You think he's saved, and you think I'm lost? What are they saying? I'm better than that. <laughs> up the dosage, there, sweetheart. Uh, that, that's not the mentality. That's not the heart of a saint. That isn't. That's uh, someone who is never of us. Be made manifest that they were not of us. Why? Because sooner or later, the self-justification has to end. Or else the Lord will end you. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ may shew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Okay? How do you arrive at your belief, by the way? By being broken of your self righteousness which the Christians like to jump over, okay? And verse 16, Paul is declaring that he is the example, okay? Yes, he was the apostle unto the Gentiles, as Peter was the apostles unto the circumcision, the Hebraic Jews. But Paul's example of what it is to be a saint, which they settled in Acts 15, okay, he, he's the one. He was, you know, it was revealed unto Paul, Okay? Now on to the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible. The only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. 
This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning the faith have made shipwreck. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Hmm. Now, Hymenaeus and Alexander are those who have made the, their faith shipwrecked. And what did Paul do? Delivered them unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. You can make a very valid argument that these two guys were actually saints who got messed up. Okay? If they weren't, I think the wording would have been a little different. Hmm? But like I said, the point is, whom I delivered unto Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme. Even denying the Lord that bought them, saved saints who get messed up and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Okay? 1 Corinthians 5. 1 Corinthians 5, verses 1 on to verse 8. Okay? Talking about struggling saints. 1 and 2 Corinthians. Okay? People who like to defend themselves and justify themselves when you bring them up about uh, Romans 13. It's like, well, Paul doesn't mention idolatry at all. <laughs> uh, have you read First and Second Corinthians sometimes? Well, okay. Uh, First Corinthians 5, verses 1 and verse 8. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. It's not his mother because I'm old-fashioned. If it was his mother, I believe our father would have told us that. No, it was his father's wife, his stepmother. Ew. Ew. Love is not love. Okay? What was written in Leviticus holds still to today. Okay? All right? So, ew. Anyway. And ye are puffed up. And have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. I saw that one jerk guy. It's like, well, for all of you who get on me about, he didn't say this, about my cursing, I'll remind you of Psalm 37 or something about that. Yeah, that guy's a devil. He's lost. He's at peace with his sin. And he justifies his sin. Again, I have no pity or remorse or regret for any of you idiots who think that guy is safe. But enough of that. Okay, but, and ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. We're, we're Christians. We're not judging you. Uh, you're doing things, but uh, only God knows if you're truly saved. We can. This, but see, you're messed up. That's when you need to be in the church, right? You're, you're, having, you're having relations with your father's wife. So, instead of kicking you out so the Lord can get on your hiney, oh no, you, we need to bring you into the church. That's when you need us, okay? And look at how pious we are. We're not judging you. Only God can truly know. See how that works? Well, and, you know, we can't judge you because only God truly knows. We dealt with this. Uh, we must need judge. Okay, we must judge. Okay, come on, people. Get your head out. For I verily as absent in body, but present in lowercase as spirit, have judged already as though I were present concerning him that hath so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit, Lord says, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the lowercase s, because the capital case s don't need to be saved because that's God the Father. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost. You know the Lord is that spirit. Okay? That the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Now, when you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, I believe it is. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, uh, where is that? Yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, verses 4 on to verse 9. For out of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote unto you with many tears, not that ye should be grieved, but that ye might know the love which I have more abundantly unto you. But if any have caused grief, he hath not grieved me, but in part, that I may not overcharge you all. Sufficient to such a man is this punishment, which was inflicted of many. Talking about what we just read in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, okay? The, I think, obviously, and we're looking at the proof of this, this guy that Paul is addressing was having relations with his, ste his uh, stepmother was a saint. I really do. How do you know? Let's keep reading in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 2, okay? So they, Paul said, kick this guy out! Obviously, this dude repented of it. Verse 7. So that contrary wise, ye ought rather to forgive him and comfort him. Let perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. Wherefore, I beseech you that ye would confirm your love toward him. For to this end also did I write that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. I think, obviously, that the guy that Paul was talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 was a saint who got really messed up. Really messed up. And they delivered him what? They kick him out. Where Christianity says, you're, you're living in sin or you, you're in sin. That's when you, no, 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 no. See, because like a, like a cancer, like free grace is, if it gets its, hand, its way in there, it will affect everybody else. Okay? And then it's like, well, he's doing it. Well, what's wrong with me doing it? And then you get into that, that circle of justification. Okay? To deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction, oh, back in 1 Corinthians 5, for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. But we're not judging you. Only God can truly know. That's when you need to come amongst us. Yeah. No. Kick them out. Stay away. Look, bro brother, I, you're messed up in sin. Big time sin. Okay? I love you. You get away from me. Okay? You get away from me. You get away from us. Okay? You and the Lord, you and the Lord need to do some talking. Okay? You, you, you go away. Well, why? I got, look, brother, I love you. I'm telling you the truth. See, if we, by indifference, accept you in, then what are we, through indifference, giving credence to? That we are accepting of what is clearly contrary to Scripture. And justifying it with, well, we're not judging you, being puffed up. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sac sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Okay? So, there are saved people that can get royally messed up. I did. Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. Jesus is the Lord. That's not proof that anyone is saved. All that proves is that you can say it. And hey, I was in error. I taught that. And the Lord got, got a hold of me on that. Yeah. 
And then once the Lord, uh, through the scriptures, showed that it wasn't the fact, oh, that they were, they went out and were made manifest that you weren't saved there, bloke. <laughs> Never were. Okay? So, yes, saved people can get messed up. But see, now someone like Mr. Fig, who wants to justify himself to deceive you, they come around and they, they and they do weird things. They, they they go to like Second Thessalonians, and this is what the free gracers do to justify their satanic, ecumenical, Roman Catholic <laughs> pond scum doctrine of just believe and receive. They will do things like, well, Romans 9, 10, and 11 are doctrinally written for the Jews during the time of Jesus. No, they're not. The same thing. Well, 2 Thessalonians 1 on the 12 is Paul writing for the Jews during the time of Jacob's, Jacob's trouble. No, no. But see, someone will argue, well, falling away is just saved people messed up. Now think about that. That's not the fact, that's not the truth. But think about that. Let's just for argument's sake say, okay, Mr. Fig, let's say for argument's sake, just for this, Let's say that was the truth. It's not. We're going to show, I'm going to show, we're going to show you. Not me. Excuse me, Lord. Okay. But let's say it was. Well, then. Well, then. I guess that one foul mouth news unit guy, I guess he's actually saved and just messed up anyway. Because how are we to know, right? I, I, I guess Elmer from New York is saved, huh? But just messed up, right? Hey, because, hey, the falling away are saved brethren who get messed up, right? Right? I guess the talk show host from Canada is saved, huh? I actually wish he was. But nonetheless, I guess he's saved, right? Even though he, he preaches contrary, another Jesus, you know, a Trinitarian, and another gospel, just believe him and say, I guess he's saved too. But just messed up. I guess the praise that he isn't. I guess he's saved and all that fodder. That's what that, I guess the bloke is saved too, right? Hey, because the falling away is just save people messed up. And see, what does that perverted thought lead into? Well then, hey, how can we know truly? Or, or the contrary, they come out with these checklists. Ooh. Ooh, checklists, yes. They come out with this checklist that they themselves can conveniently fulfill. Checklist Christians there, Mr. Fig. Okay? So, if the falling away that's talked about in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, <laughs> which some heretics tell you that's for the time of Jacob's trouble, but no, it isn't. Okay? No, it isn't. As for us today. Okay, the doctrine is for us today. Okay, but if that were the case, then the sky is the limit. Hmm? I guess Pentecostals who think they see God, I guess they're saved, right? Hmm? Hmm? I guess the Jehovah's are saved. They're just messed up, right? Because falling away is saved people. In... No. Fall away. Fall away. Now, falling away. Falling away. Appears once. We'll look at that last. But fall away. Luke 8. Luke 8. Verses 12 on to verse 13. The parable of the seed and the sower. Okay? Those by the wayside are they that hear, just believe and receive. Okay? Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word that was, uh, uh, taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Well, just believe, believe and be saved. Huh? On which Jesus. Huh? On which Jesus. And remember. This is written before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? All right? Verse 13. Am I reading the right thing? 
here for you? Yes, 12 on the 13. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, okay, receive the word with joy, and they have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. You mean just believe and receive and that could be all this kind of stuff? Oh, wow, I want some of that. Then along comes a saint. It's like, um, you know, what Jesus do you believe on? What do you mean? There's only one Jesus. You're right. But uh, he's got the Father. Whoa. Ah. How are you saved? By grace through faith. Yes, but how do you come to that faith? Just believe and receive. What about repentance? Repentance is going from unbelief to belief. Well, the devils also believe and tremble. I'm saved because I just believe. Bingo. Bingo. You see how that whole nonsense works? You see? They'll believe for a while, but then when the rubber hits the road... When and elsewhere this talks about when persecution ariseth because of the word, they're offended. What do you mean? I, I what do you mean? I the way I behave represents the Lord. What do you mean that I shouldn't be watching uh, 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 television or stuff like that? What do you mean I can't use prolific profanity? What do you mean? I don't like that. I'm saying because I just. Fall away. They have no root. Instruction and righteousness. Remember, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? And the belief before the death, burial, and resurrection was not in the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? They weren't aware of that until it happened. It was in him as king. Okay? But... For our instruction in righteousness, they fall away. They fall away. They had no root. They weren't of us to begin with. Okay? Hebrews 6. Hebrews 6, 1 on the 6. Hebrews 6, 1 on the 6. Now, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, <laughs> the book of Hebrews, okay? Hebrews came out of Shem. Okay, what is a Jew? A Hebraic Jew. Those that come out of Shem. Not Ham or Japheth, okay? The book of Hebrews as the book of James are two books in the scripture besides the book of Revelation that are doctrinally written for specifically the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Yes, there is doctrine that crosses dispensational lines within those two books. But primarily, after we, the body of Christ, the purchased possession, get redeemed, the Hebraic Jews, once they realize, that's that man of sin, the son of perdition, they're going to be, they're going to come to James because during the, and Hebrews, because during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works, not by grace through faith, okay? Watch out for them devils. But, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith toward God. Why is it worded like that? Because this uh, is written for the dispensation during the time of Jacob's trouble. During the time of Jacob's trouble. See, today it is by His grace through our faith. Our faith. If it isn't our faith, then we're a robot. Okay? All right? This is written for another dispensation, doctrine. Okay? Of the doctrine of baptisms, and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this will we do, if God permit. For it is impossible. Impossible. Can't happen. For those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God, or case W, and the powers of the world to come 
Now, look, fall away. Look how this is being used. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So the two things of fall away we see are in regards to those who were never of us, but have fallen away from their standing position. Luke chapter 8, that was before the death, burial, and res resurrection. Okay? We read that for instruction and in righteousness. And Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 6. Okay? For the time of Jacob's trouble. See, it was under the law for the death, burial, and resurrection. Today it is by grace through faith. And when you come the way of the cross, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, uh, you... Call out unto the Lord. See, you, you lost people can't understand that because you've never been broken. And he saves you. He seals you once saved, always saved. Okay? But see, again, falling away. Fall away. See, Hebrews 6 is saying that it's impossible. Why? Because during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. And how is it impossible? You take that mark of the beast, believing these idiots like the talk show host who say, oh, it's just believe and receive during the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, you take that mark of the beast in your right hand in your, or in your forehead, uh, you're damned. You're going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. It's impossible. Okay? It's impossible. So, in context, fall away. Is for what? Someone who gets messed up? No. For those who are never of us. Okay? Oh, we're not done. What about falleth? What about falleth? Check this out. First Peter, first Peter chapter one, verses twenty-two on to the close. First Peter chapter one, verses twenty-two on to the close. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the capital S Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Being born again. No, oh, that's only for the Jews. Paul never said it. That's a cute trick that they use. Paul defined it. Okay? Enough said. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass. And this is, he's quoting, he's making reference on to Isaiah 40, okay? And all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the God, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Falleth away. And with this, Matthew, flesh. Okay? All flesh is as grass. Matthew 16. Just one verse. Matthew 16. See, free grace Pentecostalism, Catholicism, what is the foundation that they build their thing off of? I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. They're all about flesh. They're, they're the shoe of their flesh. You know, I'm saved because I just believe. Okay, I, I had the Pucharist. Okay, I'm at church every time the doors are open. I have seen the Lord. No, you haven't. Okay, it's all flesh-based. Okay? And a religion such as Christianity, which is based on, hey, I'm a King James Bible-believing Christian, and I belong to the right cult. Flesh. Flesh. Matthew 16, 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Hmm? But those that be of men. 
And uh, this is ad-libbed here, but um, uh, Acts chapter 4. Acts, or is it Acts chapter 5, brother? I, I, I get that confused sometimes. Uh, uh, it's Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Uh, what was this guy? Uh, Gamaliel speaking here. Acts chapter 5. Uh, verses 38 on to verse 39. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or if this work be of men, flesh, it will come to naught. Free grace, Catholicism, Pentecostalism, uh, some forms of even Baptist stuff. Uh, Pente Pentecostalism, uh, Presbyterian. You know, the divided Christ of Christianity. What is that? It is of man. King James Bible believing Christianity, which is its own denomination. Part of the divided Christ now. It will come to naught. Why? Because it is of man. Flesh. Flesh. Okay? But, verse 39, if it be of God... Ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. And as we had just seen in Matthew 16, 23, again, let's read that again uh, to refresh our memories. Uh, but he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Flesh, I will, I will, I will. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Speaking of, go to Genesis 3. Go to Genesis 3, okay? Genesis 3, verses 14 on to verse 15. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, that old serpent, the devil, Satan, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, the woman is which would be Israel, not Mary. Okay, watch out for that Catholic stuff. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Satan was cursed to crawl on his belly. The serpent was cursed to crawl on his belly to eat dust all the days of his life. Thou savorest the things that be of man, not of God. Verse 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And, and, and uh, also Philippians 3. Philippians 3, verses 1. On to verse 3. Philippians 3, 1 on to verse 3. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs who return to their own vomit and live in sin. Okay? Like uh, Brother Alexander gave the great ana analogy. You know, I might drive by the old neighborhood and maybe stop there uh, uh, against my own better judgment and that would be contrary to me. But I'm not going to take up resident to live there permanently. Beware of dogs. Brother, could you put that in the comments section? Because only you, you have that gift for that. I don't. So would you, brother, you'll see this. Please put that, that analogy that you do uh, in the uh, comment section for me, please. Okay? Love you. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the lowercase s spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Easy believists. They're all about the flesh. Their faith. Their object of their faith is their faith. That is what saves them. Their faith, not the Lord. Their faith is in their faith. The Catholic, the Pucharist, and the, you know, magic abracadabra. The Pentecostal. Oh, they, they, blah, 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 blah. Some of the Baptists. 
that they go that they're, they're at the phallus house every time the doors are open and there are decent rupanites. Okay? What? That's all flesh. Flesh falleth away. Okay? Now, what about... Oh, 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 wait, 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 we're not done. Jeremiah 17. And see, oh yeah, I forgot. About, how can I forget about this one? Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. Come on, fingers, work with me. Jeremiah 17. So much of the religiosity, so much of what you people, you Christians, think are works of the Spirit amongst these Christians, King James Bible, even Christians, and amongst the, uh, the whole lot of Christianity, you think it is actually a demonstration of the Spirit. No, it isn't. The majority of it is flesh-driven. Okay? Jeremiah 17, 5 out of 10. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. I'm safe because I believe. Flesh. I had the cookie. Flesh. Okay? I speak in blah, blah, blah. Flesh. I'm at the, the fellow's house. Every time the doors are open, I'm out there winning souls. Flesh. Thus said the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Yeah, because you trust in flesh. This. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, and there is none good but God, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. Yeah, parched, no water. Out of your belly shall flow living water, streams of living water. Okay. Blessed is the man whose trust who that blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf, her reference on the wisdom, fear of the Lord. But her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. God knows my heart. Scripture says, he who trusts in his own heart is a fool. It's the saying like uh, in the courtroom, uh, the person who defend, decides to act as his own attorney, uh, the guy who decides to act as his own attorney has a fool for a client. Okay? That's good. <laughs> the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Flesh. Christianity is all flesh. The, the number, the divided Christ of Christianity is flesh. Flesh falleth away. What about fallest now? Ah, now here's something that uh, Jeremiah 37. Jeremiah 37. Check this out. Check this out. Fallest away. Fallest away. Jeremiah 37, verses 11 on to verse 15. Check this out. And it came to pass that when the army of the Chaldeans of the Chaldeans was broken up from Jerusalem for fear of Pharaoh's army, Pharaoh and his army was coming out, and like I said, right there, uh, they hadn't sacked um, Jerusalem yet, but they were close to, and it was just a diversion, just a temporary thing. Okay. Then Jeremiah went forth out of Jerusalem. To go into the land of Benjamin. But the Lord wanted Jeremiah to stay there. Because for obvious reasons. But Jeremiah's like. I'm, I do it. I'm out of here. Okay. To separate himself thence. In the midst of the people. And when he was in the gate of Benjamin. 
a captain of the ward was there, whose name was Erijah, the son of Shelemiah, the son of Hananiah. And he took Jeremiah the prophet, saying, Thou fallest away to the Chaldeans. Chaldeans, Babylon, the Babylonian religion. Mystery Babylon is Rome, but Rome is the perfection of the Babylonian religion. It was crafted in Egypt, it's perfected in Rome. Baal, worship of the sun. Roman Catholicism is perfected. Baal worship, that comes from the Babylonian religion. Okay? So, this dude said of Jeremiah, the prophet of the Lord, who was trying to get away from these guys, but obviously the Lord didn't want that. It's like, no, you got to stay here. Okay? But... Look what he said to Jeremiah. Thou fallest away to the Chaldeans. Instruction and in righteousness. What is this? Someone who isn't accusing those who are saying, you're falling away. You're messed up or you're not saved. What they mean. Oh, how many of you saints... When you uh, talk to some, especially these stupid, easy believers, it's like, you guys are lost. You got the wrong God and the wrong gospel. They, they turn it back on us and say that we're the lost ones, right? Then said Jeremiah, it's false. I fall not away to the Chaldeans. But he hearkened not to him. So Erija took Jeremiah and brought him to the princes. Wherefore the princes were wroth with Jeremiah and smote him and put him in the prison and put him in prison in the house of Jonathan the scribe for they made that the prison. So Jeremiah is like, okay, here's my chance. I'm getting out of here. Then, no coincidence, someone accuses Jeremiah of falling away to the Chaldeans. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Check this out. Check this out. You know, people accused Paul of being fake. How many of us are called fake? How many of us saints are called fake because we, through Scripture, expose the teachings of Mystery Babylon, the whore, the mother? Okay? Quite often. But, John 8. 30 on 33. As he spake these words, many believed on him. And like I said, before the death, burial, and resurrection, what was their belief in? On the Lord Jesus Christ, in the Lord Jesus Christ, as the Mashiach, the king of the Jews. It wasn't in the death, burial, and resurrection because they didn't know about it until it happened. But, as he spake these words, many believed on him. They endure for a while, but when temptation ariseth for the word, because of the word, they fall away. They were never of us. Then said, I love this. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Whoa, 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 whoa. wait. If, if, Ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Justification. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Free to continue in sin. Free to sin. Like what free grace offers you. <laughs> Just one verse. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant, servant of sin. The servant of sin. And, of course, servant of sin. Romans 6. Romans 6. Which, well, you know, we'll mention again, but Romans 6, servant of sin. 
Verse 16, Romans 6, 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Now, justification. Number 2, verse 39. Then answer, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Hmm. Who are these? But see, skip down to verse 44. Okay? See, they justified, gave the Lord two justifications. Okay? We're Abraham's seed. Okay? Abraham is our father. Second justification. Okay? Verse 44. What does the Lord say? Ye are of your father the devil. You're not saved. You don't believe, and you say you believe. You endure for a while until, until persecution cometh, until a saint comes around and says, like, Hey, wait a minute, man. What God do you believe in? Oh, what gospel? Huh? All right? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, the Garden of Eden, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Of his own. Ye shall be his gods. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will be like the most high. Okay? <laughs> Third justification. Three times they tried to justify themselves to the Lord. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him. We be, be, we be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. So, three times these guys justified themselves to the Lord. They believed on Him, and the Lord immediately was like, Whoa, dude, hold on. Then He put His finger on that one thing they lacked. See, that's, this is the truly, uh, true Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. This is how he operates. Our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, puts his finger on that one thing you lack. You ain't getting away from that, and it hurts. So what does the false do? Jump over that. Just believe and receive. Or, here, have a cookie. But three times, we're Abraham's kids. We're, we're Abraham's seed. Okay? Abraham is our father. We're not born of fornication. God is our father. And what is the, we already read verse 44. It's like, no, you're not. You're of your father the devil. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will be like the most high. Call them. That's what our Lord does. Now, upon those three, and remember the three things of the magicians in Egypt who could pass with, uh, what was it, the, um, the water, the blood, uh, the frogs, and there was another one that I, I, I forget right. But there were three things that the Egyptian magicians were able to do. But when it came to turning dirt into living lice, Couldn't do that. Right. So what happens? These same people who believed on him. Uh, verse 48. And when they couldn't get past God. When they couldn't get around the Father. When the Father. You know. When our Father through the scripture. Shows you people who the fake people actually are. They'll justify, justify, justify. But there comes a point when they won't be able to justify. They'll be found out. So what do they do? Like uh, Vladimir Lenin, I believe it was. It's like, call the enemy what you are and always speak the opposite of the truth. That's what Lenin said. That's what these devils do. And what did they do? Then answered the Jews and said unto him, verse 48, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast the devil. So, they, no, they believed on him. But Jesus was like, whoa, time out, dude. Wait a minute. 
Wait a minute. Justification. Where Abraham see? Justification. Abraham is our father. Justification. God is our father. The Lord's like, no. You're of your father, the devil. Then what? Attack. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast the devil? Fallen away, they were never of us. Oh, 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 verse uh, 52 and 53. Again. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast the devil. Abraham is dead in the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Who makest thou thyself? They said they believed on him. But then they called him a devil. Verse 58. Who is he? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am the father. The same people who believed on him justified themselves, and when they couldn't get past God, they turned around and attacked him. And then, what? then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. It's like when you've been called out, and then you go around and turn, and turn around and t uh, call everyone a devil because they're exposing you. Exactly what they did. Never of us. Oh, they they intermingled, tried to, you know, false brethren brought, uh, come in unawares. But they were never of us. Hmm? And the tie-in with Jeremiah there, the dude accused Jeremiah of falling away to the Chaldeans. You see that? 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, okay, chapter 2, verses 1 on verse 4. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by lowercase s spirit or by lowercase w word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Falling away is not saved people who get messed up. We just looked at it. Falling away is, how do you define the falling away? Okay, and uh, someone who was never of us in the first place, Mr. Fig, tried very hard and kept using circular reasoning and did the very thing to me and accused me of being circular reasoning, using circular reasoning. No, you're the one who ain't saved. But second, uh, 1 John chapter 2, they were not from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. That is a great definition of what it is to fall away and to be falling away. And we just looked at it in Scripture. Let no man deceive you by any means. That day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Which has been happening for centuries. Okay? Okay? And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And see, we get caught up, then he gets revealed, and then the third temple gets built. Okay? Okay, that's what that's talking about. See, the third temple has not been rebuilt yet. And I don't believe that the third temple will be rebuilt while the body of Christ is on the earth. 
they can get they would get that thing up like that especially when they have the deep pockets of Rome funding it okay and uh, Proverbs 24 we got to remember dear brethren okay same people get messed up we can absolutely we can we can get as saints so messed up that if we do not take heed to ourselves and receive the rebuke and correction and humble ourselves before the Lord, okay, the chastisement that yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness of those who are exercised thereby, okay? If we stubbornly resist, you know, harden our necks, the Lord will kill us. The Lord will kill you. Yes, he will. That's why when you see these guys who just believe and receive, and yet they are going on for years and years and years, but yet they're still here, they're not of us. They're not of us. God makes a, wants to use one of us as a bad example. Uh, yeah, kill the brother off. Okay? But Proverbs 24, 16. For a just man falleth seven times, riseth up again. But the wicked fall into mischief and get involved in that circle of excuse. And then try to turn it back at you when you figure it out. Wow, dude, you're not saved. Then again, according to Christianity, we never can. <laughs> oh. Okay. All right. Now go back to Second Peter, chapter two. Okay. Did you catch all that? Okay. Second Peter, chapter two. Okay. Verse two. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And Galatians chapter three. Verses 1 out of verse 3. <laughs> oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Oh, Jesuit coadjutor from Rome. You know, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay? Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you, how is that being done? By Paul's example. He, is, he was dead unto the world and dead unto himself. He is crucified with Christ, crucified unto the world by his example. Okay? This only what I learn of you. This only what I learn of you. Received ye the capitalist spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish? Have ye begun in the capitalist spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Hmm. And verse 3 in 2 Peter chapter 2. And through covetousness. Count them pennies there, you wicked devil. Count all the cars that you have. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you just, you know, but then again, then again, see, smart, you're smart, you know that you'd be attacked, but come on, dude, come on, come on, put it on your little precious channel, you know, your little channel, your little channel, put it on there, put the store up, at least, you know, hey, again, Dade Murphy. Okay, that guy's going to hell, and he, he, he at least he at least comes up front and admits. Okay, yeah, I don't want uh, Jesus. Okay, he admits it. Good for you, Dave. <laughs> Light up another one. Okay. All right. Just, just, just put it up there, dude. Put your little store option, I'm sure you can, on your channel, and go ahead and sell your little t-shirts and your coffee cups or whatever. Okay? <laughs> Even the bloke is doing that. 
<laughs> talk about talk about making merchandise of people. <laughs> oh, and through covetousness, and the Lord abhorreth covetous. Shall they with vain words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damna and their damnation slumbereth not? Make merchandise. Come on, dude. For once, just just come out and say, you know, you know, just do it. Just put the store option on your channel and and, and go for it, dude. Just go for it. Go for it. Okay. You've already proven yourself a shrewd businessman when you did your whole little fiasco, whatever, okay? Just do it. <laughs> Just do it, man. Come on. Come on. All right. Come on. Just do it. Just do it. Go for it. Okay? Just do it. Okay? Now, let's skip to verses 14. On to the close. Now see, in verse 1, Peter is giving us two. Okay? False prophets. Okay? There will be false teachers. Okay? Yes. But there are those who are denying the Lord that bought them. Saved people are the ones who are bought. And bring upon themselves swift destruction. There's a difference. There are those who are never of us. And there are those who are saved and get messed up. And we have already proven that the falling away is not saved people get messed up. No, it's those who were never of us that are being made manifest. That's what the falling away is. Okay? When you continue reading 2 Peter chapter 2, Peter gives the example of Lot. You know, Lot, who lingered, and the angels have to be like, Dude, come on, we can't do anything until we get you out of here. Whose wife was sad that she was leaving, leaving Sodom. She looked back because she didn't want to leave. Anyone who puts their hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Okay, she didn't want to leave. She looked back, became a pillar of salt. Okay, don't look back from what you're leaving. Okay, lot who got drunk by his two daughters and then procreated and had children by his daughters because they thought the entire world got kablooey, okay? The same lot who, in order to pacify the crowd of sodomites at Sodom, sodomy, sodomite, okay, Sodom, okay, who, wanted, who tried to pacify the dudes who were breaking down the door that they could get at the male angels. And incidentally, I, I haven't really checked the Apocrypha. Scripture. There is no such thing in Scripture as a female angel. No. Well, angels are sexless, some say, right? Um, you read context, the appearance of angels are all masculine, they're male. There is no female angel from Ireland with red hair who's saying, God loves you. That's heresy. There is no female angel, Hamite, who sings gospel music. Angels, according to scripture, are male and they don't have wings. Period. Okay? Just just to throw that out there. Okay? Just to throw that out there. Angels are male. They are not females from Ireland saying, God loves you. Okay? There are no female angels. That's what says the scripture. Okay? But, just wanted, wanted to throw that at you. The same lot who was wanted to protect the male angels and give his daughters onto the crowd at Sodom to abuse and pro procreate with. That same lot. Okay? 
The example Peter uses here, verses 7 and 8, and delivered just lot, vexed it with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man, dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed it, his, his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Scripture right there calls Lot righteous. But yet he lingered. He, wanted, he was willing to sacrifice his own daughters to the Sodomites of Sodom who wanted to do things with the male angels. And as, as a bizarre twist, his daughters get him drunk and bear his children. You talk about being messed up, huh? But yet, he was declared righteous by Scripture. See the example there? Okay? See? The falling away, dear brethren, we, 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 we just proved it. We just scripturally proved. Okay? Fall away. In context is for what? Those who were never of us. And when you saw that in Fallus, the one dude was accusing Jeremiah of that. As they justified themselves three times to the Lord and then turned and said, you have a devil to God the Father. Okay? Okay? Anyway. 14 on to 22. Having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin. Well, Brad, we can't cease from sin. You say that yourself. That is true. But see, as we talked about in Monday's video, we are to sin less. Not chuck off everything and just go dive headlong into it. No. We are to strive against sin. Paul did. You know, don't sin, but, you know, we can't stop sinning. Does that mean that we shouldn't try? And just like that one filthy, vile, vomitous dude, the, you know, one guy, uh, and no, he's not saved. We are to strive against sin. Absolutely. Having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, sin beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. Guess what? We're not cursed. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Cursed is any man that doeth not all the things of the law. Okay? We're not cursed children. Who are cursed children? Lost people. Okay? which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Oh, kind of making merchandise, you know, want the applause, they run to the front, that kind of thing, okay? But was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass, speaking with a man's voice, Forbade the madness of the prophet. Madness, not anger, not anger, madness. Woohoo! Kooky, crazy. Okay? These are wells without water. You know, living water that comes out of their belly. They're in parched land. They have no water. They're not saved. Okay? Clouds that are carried with the tempest. Like the Athenians who like to gossip about all new things. The word gossip isn't in scripture. But uh, like to uh, speak of some new thing. They ride the uh, train. They ride the wave with the, con with the thing. Like uh, you see this with these easy believers streamers. They do this. The one does this and this, 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 this. Okay, it's, it's, it's sensationalism. And I'm not talking about the political movement. Movement. I mean literal, it's, it's, a, it's a sensation, so they get on the bandwagon, okay? So, they're carried with every tempest. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Uh, 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 
uh, 1 Thessalonians 5. 1 Thessalonians 5. Okay? 1 Thessalonians 5. Uh, verse 9 on to verse 10. For God has not, hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, be dead, we sh should live together, live together with him. Okay? So, we're not appointed on the wrath. Why? Because we're going to obtain salvation. What does that mean? Come on, brother! Psst, we're up. There we go. Okay? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay? And when we die, guess what? Our spirit and soul leave this sagging sin suit. Okay? Very simple. So, darkness is not reserved for us saints. That's for lost people. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, just believe and receive. Don't worry about sin. Hey, the more you sin, the better it is for you. We're not under law. We're under grace. So go ahead and use uh, this grace as a license to sin and speak worse than a sailor to justify any kind of sin, looking at pornography or whatever or whatever or whatever. Okay? All right? Yeah. Or, or it's not a doctrinal issue that you're, you want to uh, yoke yourself up with the Vatican. We won't go there. But anyway, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh. And the flesh falle, uh, faileth. Fleshly, carnal. Okay. Flesh. Christianity is a flesh. Okay. The divided Christ is a flesh. Through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live, live in error. Live in error. Hmm. Romans 6, Romans 6, 1 and on to verse 2. <laughs> it's funny, we keep coming back to this, don't we? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That's what the easy believer says. Yeah. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Live. We used to live on uh, Madison Street. We could drive by there, go into that house, but that's not where we live. A saint sins daily, but we don't stay there. If we do, oh, the Lord is going to really get on us. And if that doesn't work, he's going to hand us over that our spirit, that our flesh may be destroyed. Okay? See, see, we saints represent the true God. And how we, how we um, serve him reflects him. And if you as a saint absolutely refuse to do what God says and just snuff your nose and go on in your stuff, sooner or later the Lord will kill you. Something will happen. Health will, any, whatever. Okay? Okay? All right? So, yes, we saints, we can get messed up in sin. We can even stay therein. But sooner or later, that circle of excuse stops. Hopefully, it's by a harsh rebuke through Scripture and the Lord gets you down on your face. Or else, if you leave him, you know, if you, if you keep up with the Lord, sooner or later he will drop you. Okay? All right? All right? 
at verses 7 on to verse 13 in Romans 6. Okay? For he that is dead is free from, freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 11 on to verse 13. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. See, and a lot of Christianity avoid death of self. Death to self-righteousness. That's what the free gracers uh, avoid. Okay? Catholicism kind of kind of touches on it, but they replace it with works of, of righteousness. Their own righteousness, contrition, confession, having the cookie, drinking the wine, giving money to the church building. Okay? It is a faithful day, saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we, de if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. And that's not talking about salvation. It's talking about other things. Because you go the way of the cross and die to your self-righteousness. Take responsibility. Have the hell scared out of you. In that foul swoop of a moment, you, the lesser, can't wait to, Lord, save me. He saves you. He seals you. Once saved, always saved. Okay? But see, Christianity are thieves and robbers. They boot the door and climb up some other way. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. It's not talking about salvation. We can't lose what isn't ours to lose, okay? If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. And Ephesians 5.30. Come on. And Ephesians 5.30. <laughs> Ephesians 5.30. Uh, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Okay. Now back to Romans chapter 6. Okay, where were we reading? 7 on to 13. Okay. Uh, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more. Uh, let's read, uh, start from 7 on to verse 14 again. Okay. 13. Okay. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, Catholic. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And you're not serving the true Lord when being alive unto Christ is giving you the license to curse, profane, uh, pro prolific profanity, to justify pornography, as, and also to just, well, only God really knows. No, you, you're lost. Okay? Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Reign, control you. Live in you. that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. So, in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 22, when Peter quotes, and he's quoting from um, uh, Proverbs 26, half quoting in a way, because Proverbs 26, verse 11, Proverbs 26, verse 11, as a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool who says in his heart there is no God except themselves, 
returneth to his folly. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 22. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is returned to his male, own vomit again, and the sow that was washed in her female, wallowing in the mire. So yes, the context, the context here, the context here. Let's pick up again now in 2 Peter, verse 19. Verse 19, okay? Let's read verse 18 again. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean, saved, escape from them who live in error. We saints, we visit. We don't live. And when we decide to stay there too long, oh, the Lord gets harsh. And again, saint, if you're in your sin like that, and you're not getting any rebuke from a brother or through the scripture because you don't want to read it because you know what the Lord is going to say to you, you need to be careful. You know, drinking yourself to death one day, smoking yourself to death one day, you need to be careful. While they promise them liberty. <laughs> They themselves are the servants of corruption. Free to continue in sin. Easy believism. Just believe and receive. You're free to continue in sin. You're free to sin. You are free to sin. Go ahead. And the peace they offer you is peace with that sin. Because you're free to do it, so you have peace with it. It's, it shows. When someone can prolifically curse and then have the audacity, it's like, well, the end of that man is peace. I, you're at peace with sin. You're lost. The product of easy believism. Okay? They themselves are the servant of corruption. Servants of corruption. For whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in Bondage. See, they seek out our liberty to bring people into bondage. Oh, you f ye foolish Galatians, huh? Hmm? I don't want to walk according to the scriptures. Along comes a free gracer. Hey, you don't have to. Live it up. You just believe and receive, so hey, live it up. Or the Catholic. Hey, hey, here, here. Eat this. Okay, go talk to a Jesuit priest. Okay, do these. Hey, give money to the church building. Okay. For if they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge. 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 Of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We all have knowledge. Knowledge is the product, byproduct of what? Wisdom. The wisdom that is from our Lord is first, is first uh, peaceable, easy to be entreated, full of good fruits, without partiality or hypocrisy. The other wisdom is earthly, made of dirt, sensual, led by your feelings, devilish, self-explanatory. Through... For if after they have escaped the pollution of pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they endure for a while, but they have no root. But when temptation or persecution ariseth because of the word, time, by and by, anon, by and by, they are offended and fall away. They were never of us. They are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Our latter end is glorious. Why? Because to be absent with the body is present with the Lord. This is clearly not addressing, he's clearly not talking about or addressing those who are saved. Clearly. 
For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. A lot of these free grace scumbags are aware of the true gospel but reject it because they love their sin. Um, yeah, so like the guys who teach this, except that Tom guy, that guy is absolutely stupid. Same with Jack Smack, that guy is just so stupid, okay? But they're aware of the true gospel, but they reject it because they love their sin, okay? It's like, you know, Mr. Dade Murphy, he, know, he has heard the true gospel, and he openly and defiantly rejects it. Um, it's worse for you because you know the truth and you reject it. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Like the bloke, he knows what the true gospel is. But he, he's not saved. But he knows what it is. And goes on still in defiance. Putting on a halfway decent facade for those who don't know the truth about him. But he knows what the true gospel is. And he thinks he's going to die on his deathbed and like his buddy Constantine going to repent and then go, yeah, yeah. All the while living your life as a devil. Yeah. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog has turned to his own vomit again and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. So is that about us saints? No. That's not about us saints. No. No, it isn't. Peter is talking about those who are not of us. That's not about us. What is though? Romans 7. Romans 7. Verses 15 on to 25. See, the difference between a Christian and a saint. For that which I do I allow not. For what I would that do I not. But what I hate that do I. If then I do that which I would not. I consent unto the law that it is good. Yeah, because by the law is the knowledge of sin. And see, the antinomianists, they're not even bound by the morality of the law. Crazy, okay? Now, then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. To perform it. Do you want to give up that sin? Do you have the will? Huh? Do you? Hmm. For the good that I would, would, I do not. And Paul's talking about sin in general. Paul doesn't want, didn't want to sin. But he knew that he couldn't stop sinning no matter how hard he tried. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law, that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. You know, the hidden man of the heart, okay? But I see another law in my members... Okay. All right. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Now, one of these heretics would be like, read that and it's like, okay, but yeah, just get, don't worry about it. Just go on with it. Hey, I'm free to do these things. Hey, uh, the more I sin, the more... But see, a saint, they're like, hey, well, I'm, I'm saved because I just believe. Okay, because of God's grace, I can continue on in these things. 
And the more I send them, but see, this is what these guys, these Christians don't have. And herein the difference between a saint. Our, our one dear brother, and I gotta, I'm not going to mention your name, brother. Uh, our dear one brother, eh, our one dear sweetheart brother from Ohio. Um, what a, a, a lovely saint. He, like us all, unless you're, you know, a perfectly sanctified creature from Maine or something like that. But, you know, we all have these things that, do we really want to be with or get rid of them? Huh? Do we really want to? But see, perfect example. That dear brother is so hard on himself. But see, when that dear brother sins, unlike the false, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. You also got to be careful with that because there are some people who can arrive to that, but see, there's still that vestige of uh, self, that vestige of I can do better. We can't. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Paul is not saying, well, just go ahead and do it. No, no, no. Did you read Romans chapter 6? No, what is he saying? What is he saying? We're going to sin. We are to sin less. Okay? You're going to sin. Unless you're a perfect creature. And you're not. But you're going to sin. You're going to sin every day. Okay? And remember, dude, sinless perfection. When, when the free gracer can rightly refute sinless perfection, what does that say for sinless perfectionism? <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay? You're going to sin. Do, do, you know, you know, to avoid sin, to sin less. But remember, you're going to sin. He's not justifying it. Okay, he's telling you, it's like, look, I want to, Paul's like, I don't want to sin either, but I can't stop it. To be absent, you know, in Romans chapter 8, sin has been relegated here. That's why the devils love it so much, because they're all about flesh. But to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay? So, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, uh, I hope this uh, I hope this will help some of you brethren who are struggling, uh, who actually struggle. And is that a struggle? You know. But um, and again, thank you, dear brother, for the question. I, I I love it when the saints ask me questions like this. And it wasn't just me. He presented the question to several brethren. But it's like, and I talked to him yesterday about it. It's like you know, I love that question question that needs to be shared so same with you brother as i said at the beginning of this video <laughs> pray for me god that's gonna take some stuff but anyway that's gonna be it for this video please keep us in your prayers so uh, we we need help <laughs> we need all we need all the prayers we can get so please pray for us and those of you brethren and sister sisters who have been praying for your servant and his health and my health. Day two now, when I've been feeling best I've been in quite a couple of weeks. So, thank you. Thank you. Anyway, going to get this video uploaded. Hopefully, this doesn't take three and a half hours to get this uploaded. Uh, thank you, brethren. I love you. And may our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, Bless you abundantly, dear saints. Bye-bye.